Today in the headlines, the latest in cost-efficient AI, plus a new benchmark with more real-world relevance, and much, much more. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off with a new model out of XAI, which is called Grok 4 Fast. According to XAI, the model is capable of delivering similar results to Grok 4 while using 40% fewer reasoning tokens. Combined with a big drop in cost per token, an XAI says this results in a 98% reduction in price to achieve the same performance on frontier benchmarks as Grok 4. For example, on the AIME 2024 and 2025 math benchmarks, Grok 4 Fast achieves very similar results to Grok 4 while using around 60% as many tokens. Meanwhile, the model's performance on the GPQA Diamond Scientific Knowledge Benchmark was slightly worse than Grok 4, but matched GPT-5 high. Artificial analysis ran their independent benchmarking and came up with equally impressive results. The model scored a 60 on their intelligence index, placing it in line with Gemini 2.5 Pro and Claude 4.1 Opus, but slightly below O3 or GPT-5 high. Alongside the efficiency characteristics, Grok 4 Fast also features a 2 million token context window, which is clearly aimed at things like large coding tasks. The model also has a unified architecture, allowing both reasoning and non-reasoning variants to operate based on the same model weights. The operation of reasoning is controlled via system prompt rather than being baked into the model. Overall, what's very clear is that this release is about pushing the cost-performance efficiency barrier even farther. I think it's fair to say that this is the narrowest gap we've seen between the frontier of performance and the fast and cheap model variant. Artificial analysis remarked, Stepping back, this release follows the trend of the cost of accessing AI intelligence falling quickly. In the past one and a half years, the cost of accessing GPT-4-level intelligence has fallen around 500 times, and falls have continued as intelligence frontiers have been reached. Professor Ethan Malik writes, With the new Grok 4 Fast, the price performance curve for AI has shifted again. I updated my chart to reflect this change. I have to update it every couple weeks now. I also think the GPQA Diamond benchmark is likely maxed out. The tests themselves have errors, making it impossible to get to 100%. I'm going to need to start doing this with a harder benchmark. The chart for those of you watching have the benchmark score over on the y-axis and the cost per million tokens descending on the x-axis, meaning that up and to the right means higher performance for cheaper. And you can see Grok 4 Fast out way up here on the top right of that curve. We've talked a lot recently about why, for the moment, most organizations are still choosing to use the -the state-of-the-art model, no matter what the cost implications, but that I think that part of that reflects the fact that each new model advance is still really unlocking new use cases, and that as more models are over the threshold into high performance for a lot of use cases, those choices might start to shift. Basically, if you have the option to use Grok 4 Fast, which involves so little compromise on performance for so much gain in terms of cost, you're likely going to do that even if you were not willing to make the trade-off between Gemini 2.5 Pro and Gemini 2.5 Flash just six months ago. One other addendum on XAI news. According to sources familiar with the deal, XAI has raised $10 billion in debt and equity from investors including Valor Capital, the Qatar Investment Authority, and the Saudi investment firm Kingdom Holding Company at a $200 billion valuation. CNBC reports that this is additional to the $10 billion that was raised a few weeks ago. Seems like we're unlikely to get any official clarity on the deal, as on Friday when the news broke, Elon Musk posted fake news. XAI is not raising any capital right now. The secrecy around the fundraising is noteworthy considering a string of reporting of unrest at XAI. Last week, the Wall Street Journal claimed that a string of executive departures, including the CFO, were related to concerns about the company's management and financial health. That article claimed that Valor Capital Antonio Garcias had played a hands-on role in mediating disputes with executives, a claim which XAI has denied. On the brighter side, the New York Times reports that Grok has reached 64 million monthly users, according to Musk. The claim was reportedly made in an all-hands on Thursday. Now, moving back to benchmarks and their saturation... This is obviously a big concern, and not just for Ethan Malik to be able to show off the AI price performance curve. The more saturated the benchmarks are, the harder it is to really understand new model performance gains. To help with that, Scale AI has introduced a new coding benchmark. At this stage, Frontier AI models are all clustered around 70 to 80% on Sui Bench Verified, and users don't have a lot of confidence that a 1 or 2 percentage point difference is all that meaningful. To solve this problem, Scale has introduced a new benchmark called Sui Bench Pro. The new test will source problems from commercial, proprietary, and copyleft-style open-source code bases to reduce the chances that problems are contained in training data. It's also designed to more closely reflect production environments and real-world problems. Being Lou, the director of research at Scale, wrote, Current benchmarks like Sweebench have driven real progress, but they no longer reflect the frontier challenges faced in production systems. Alongside contamination resistance measures, Bing noted that the benchmark now includes more difficult tasks like changing 100-plus lines at a time and working across large code bases. 
Testing the current Frontier models, Scale found that GPT-5 had the best performance with 23.26%, while Claude 4 Opus was at 22.71%. The next pair were Claude 4 Sonnet at around 17 and Gemini 2.5 Pro at around 13%. If nothing else, the spread of scores demonstrates that new benchmarks have the potential to more easily differentiate between leading models. On top of that, the generally low scores show that there's a lot of room to measure improvement before the benchmark becomes saturated. Lou commented that the scores were even lower on the problems based on commercial code bases, adding that this highlights, quote, how much harder working with real enterprise code bases remains. I think that this shift not only to find new benchmarks, but also to have them more directly related to real-world performance and the environments that AI is actually going to operate in is a great shift. Moving over to the rumor mill section of our episode, OpenAI appears to have some interesting new releases coming soon. On Sunday, Sam Altman posted on X, over the next few weeks, we are launching some new compute intensive offerings. Because of the associated costs, some features will initially only be available to pro subscribers and some new products will have additional fees. Our intention remains to drive the cost of intelligence down as aggressively as we can and make our services widely available. And we are confident we will get there over time but we also want to learn what's possible when we throw a lot of compute at interesting new ideas. Resource constraints were one of the big themes around the release of GPT-5. It was the first time that OpenAI's flagship model didn't increase in size from the previous iteration. According to semi-analysis, OpenAI added more compute this quarter than in any previous quarter, so they might have a little space capacity to play around with, although given that Sam is already preparing us to pay more for whatever it is they're releasing, it seems like it's going to be pretty compute-hungry. Speculation, of course, ran rampant on X. Vrasser wrote, Sam just teased new compute heavy drops. This could be Sora 2 or the reasoning beast that won golden math and code. Maybe even native video generation, edit every frame, every angle, every detail like Photoshop for reality. If that's true, we're weeks away from collapsing the gap between imagination and creation. I would say that from my exploration, Sora 2 certainly seemed to be the odds on favorite guess. Others, though, think it will be that experimental reasoning model that solved the final problem in the ICPC coding competition last week. Some also recalled Noam Brown's recent comments about a civilization of geniuses in the data center. Prinz commented, Reminder that Noam Brown's multi-agent team has been working on significantly increasing the time horizon over which a model can reason. Meanwhile, the team at OpenAI has been pretty tight-lipped, with a researcher named Tristan kind of tamping down speculation posting new features, improvements. The next few weeks are going to be fun. Meanwhile, OpenAI's inference bill just keeps going up, with the company planning to spend an extra $100 billion on backup servers over the next five years. The information reports that investors were told that backups would be monetizable by either powering research breakthroughs or servicing surges in product usage. That amount is in addition to the $350 billion that OpenAI had already projected to spend on server rentals through 2030. OpenAI is now expecting to spend an average of $85 billion a year on server rentals over the next five years. Meaning that even if this year's projected $20 billion in revenue is achieved and rapid growth continues, they will still have a large shortfall that will need to be made up with regular fundraising. CFO Sarah Fryer told investors that the company is, quote, massively compute constrained and said the plan was necessary to ensure OpenAI doesn't need to hold up features or new models. Information executive editor Amira Fradi commented, The implication of OpenAI's plan to rent $450 billion worth of servers before the end of this decade are mind-blowing. Certainly, the new projection backs up the idea that OpenAI might actually need the $300 billion contract they recently signed with Oracle that sent that company's stock soaring. Speaking of Oracle, last one today, Oracle is in talks with Meta for a cloud computing deal worth $20 billion. Tiny, tiny numbers after what we were just talking about. Bloomberg reports that Meta is looking to sign a multi-year deal to purchase compute for training and inference. The deal would diversify Oracle's revenue streams, which are currently heavily concentrated with OpenAI. It does, however, raise questions on whether Oracle and their infrastructure partners will be able to build the multiple gigawatt-scale data centers required to fulfill their contracts. On Meta's side of the equation, it's very clear that CEO Mark Zuckerberg is willing to spend whatever it takes on AI infrastructure. In an interview last week, he said, We're going to spend aggressively. Even if we lose a couple hundred billion, it would suck, but it's better than being behind in the race for superintelligence. Amina's investing commented, To even hear Zuck say this, it shows how important they believe the opportunity is. CapEx is not slowing down. That's going to do it for today's headlines. Next up, the main episode. 